uh, good morning class 12 uh, if you remember in the previous uh, class we had discussed the types of capital i told you the five types of capital let me summarize to you again before we start the next fresh topic so i was telling you about the types of capital when i told you about human capital social capital manufactured capital financial capital and the last one and most significant one that is natural capital so i told you natural capital means all the natural resources on which human life is sustained right so then in the next uh, session i told you uh, what are the things that we get from a natural capital what are the functions of natural capital i classified them under provisioning services what are the resources we get from the uh, capitals then i told you about the regulatory services i told you about cultural services and the supporting services right so uh, these are the basic functions of natural capital now we have come to the last part of the chapter where we will try to understand why natural capital is getting degenerated why are we losing natural capital day by day so the last part of your chapter we will try to discuss a few points where we try to understand why air water soil forest and all other natural resources are in danger so we will classify them into a few points and we will try to understand the reasons behind degeneration of natural resources so the first point uh, in your text if you see on page number 130 it says the basic reason behind loss of natural capital is acid deposition which we generally call acid rain now definitely this is not a global phenomenon which is occurring everywhere it's a uh, it is a uh, confined in those areas which are heavily industrialized places which have a lot of industries in those particular places the natural capital is affected by acid rain so as you already know about acid rain most of you must be knowing about acid rain acid deposition or acid rain occurs in heavily industrialized areas where the air is always suspended with gases like carbon dioxide there are there is sulfur dioxide there is chlorine gas there are nitrous oxides suspended in the air and sometimes these gases they tend to mix with the uh, water vapor in the environment and when these gases mix with the water vapor then the respective acids are formed like there is hydrochloric acid sulfuric acid nitric acid all these acid vapors are formed and these acid vapors they sometimes mix with the clouds and they come down as a rain what we refer to as acid rain now definitely acid rain does not have any positive effect on any organism if it falls on the soil it will acidify the soil the soil will lose its moisture and fertility all the beneficial microorganisms that are there in the soil helping in the cycling of nutrients they die if acid deposition is in the water bodies it affects all the aquatic life and the water gets acidified human beings if in contact with acid rain if it falls on the skin it causes skin cancer so here we understand that most of our natural capital is affected by acid deposition now in your examination you are also asked about natural sources of acid rain sometimes acid rain cannot be prevented because there are some natural factors that cause acid rain like there are forest fires we cannot control forest fire you cannot control volcanic eruption volcanic eruption forest fires all 
all these release tremendous amount of poisonous gases into the air and that gas may also lead to acid rain. But definitely we have to understand here that acid rain more than being natural is anthropogenic. It is man-made. Man-made factors cause acid rain such as there are industries created by us, factories created by us, burning of fossil fuel is by us. So in totality we can see that man is responsible for acid rain and the degeneration of natural resources. The next point that we can uh, see degrades the natural resource is air pollution. When the natural concentration of the gases in the air, they start changing, they start increasing in concentration and they increase so much that plants, animals, soil, even the monuments and buildings, anything gets affected that is uh, air pollution. So once your air gets polluted, all the natural resources, plants, animals, or biotic elements, everything is very badly affected, right? Then the third point we can see what is affecting our natural resource is uh, eutrophication, that is water pollution. Now what is eutrophication? We have discussed in the previous chapters also about eutrophication. Eutrophication is a phenomenon that occurs in the water body when water bodies are enriched with too much of fertilizer. Now from where does the fertilizer come? From the agricultural land. We use chemical fertilizers on the agricultural land and that fertilizer is made up of NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Now the irrigation runoff, they carry these fertilizers and they deposit them in some water body. And then what happens, be it a lake or a pond or a river, whatever, what happens is any water body naturally has small quantity of algae. Now when these water bodies are enriched with too much of fertilizers, these algae they get nutrition suddenly and they start multiplying rapidly and they multiply so much that they cover the entire surface of the water body. Now you must have seen water bodies, lakes and ponds being green on the top. That is algal bloom. This particular phenomenon is referred to as algal bloom. That has happened because of enrichment of the water body with fertilizer. Now, when there is algal bloom, what happens is the oxygen diffusion that takes place into the water body, the sunlight diffusion that takes place into the water body, that cannot take place because the algae blocks the oxygen supply as well as the sunlight supply. And then slowly and gradually the water body becomes devoid of oxygen. And then the aquatic organisms start dying and when the aquatic organism dies and the water body becomes zero oxygen this particular phenomenon is termed as eutrophication. So we see here that eutrophication is also responsible for degeneration of our natural resources. Then there are many other factors that uh, degenerate the uh, uh, natural uh, resources in, in our environment. The other factor, ozone depletion, uh, which you all know about, the layer in the stratosphere, ozone, which is supposed to block the ultraviolet rays coming from the sun, because of which life is possible on earth. Now what had happened is, because of the excessive use of CFC, that is chlorofluorocarbon, what happened is, the ozone layer got depleted. The CFCs were used as coolants in refrigerators and air coolers and it found its use in uh, uh, making of body sprays and perfumes and home making and many other places CFC found its use. But later discoveries by scientists showed that the CFC was rising and reaching the stratosphere where there were 
the chlorine part of the CFC was combining with the ozone and they were converting the ozone O3 to oxygen and oxygen is not capable of trapping the ultraviolet rays of the sun and what started happening was UV rays started penetrating and all our natural resources were very badly affected and once we realized this as you all know CFCs were banned from the uh, world. CFCs are no longer used as a coolant in any place, right? So ozone depletion is regarded as another factor behind the degeneration of our natural resources. And then uh, people practice uh, deforestation. When there is deforestation to satisfy the demands of the human beings, as you all know, once we start deforestation, we are losing millions and millions of species. Millions of species who are dependent on the forest, they are wiped out from the environment. So deforestation is another major reason behind degeneration of natural capital. And the uh, next would be climate change, global warming, greenhouse effect. That is global warming when we say this is something which is happening all over the globe. The increase in the temperature because of excessive carbon dioxide, methane and other gases which have blanketed the troposphere because of which the sun's rays, the sun's heat is trapped inside the troposphere. And this warming that is taking place, that is called global warming. And because of global warming, what is happening? Most of our natural resources are very badly affected. So this is another reason behind degeneration of natural capital. And the last one would be the climatic change. The climatic change that we see, that we are witnessing today, the uh, dramatic change in the climate that is taking place all over the world, we have to understand that man is capable of coping up with that. Human beings are capable of coping up with the climate change, not the other resources which are very, very fragile to changes in climate. So all our resources are very fragile, they are very delicate, they cannot withstand the change in climate. So they slowly and gradually start dying out. So these are the few points which have led to the degeneration of our natural capital. So first you need to understand natural capital, types of natural capital, functions of natural capital and why natural capital is getting degenerated. Right? So we have come to the last part of the chapter. We are just left with two more uh, points. One is ecological footprint, which is very important. And the last part, last page, which discusses since natural capital is getting uh, degenerated, how do we regenerate? It is degenerated, now we need to regenerate. So in the next last lecture for chapter 7, I will be discussing with you ecological footprint and natural regeneration of resources. Thank you class.